Exhaust system restrictions reduce engine power and lower fuel economy. The easiest test to perform is the intake manifold vacuum test. On an idling engine, connect the vacuum gauge to a source of intake manifold vacuum. Here I'm connecting to a vacuum source for the EGR system. Some people like to use the vacuum hose that connects to the brake booster. A healthy engine should have a steady reading between 17 and 22 inches of mercury at idle. This engine is producing about 20 inches of mercury and the needle is steady. To test for an exhaust restriction, increase and hold the engine RPMs at 2500. The reading should drop momentarily, then return to its original reading, possibly a bit higher. This means that there is no restriction. If the reading drops but returns to its original state slowly, you most likely have an exhaust restriction. The intake manifold vacuum test is a good quick test to determine if the engine has other problems. At idle, if the needle fluctuates, you can have a leaking valve, a sticking valve, even a misfire. If the reading is low, ignition timing could be late. What happens if we introduce a vacuum leak? The reading slightly dropped but recovered and the engine idled a bit rough. Short term fuel trims went up and long term fuel trims started to increase. How is the oxygen sensor reacting? This vehicle uses a conventional oxygen sensor when the vacuum leak was introduced. Was the oxygen sensor voltage reading lower than normal or higher than normal? You can also test for an exhaust system restriction by using an exhaust system back pressure gauge. You remove the oxygen sensor closest to the engine and thread in the adapter and connect it to the gauge. At idle, the reading should be in the green, less than a quarter of a PSI is ideal. Next, hold the RPMs at 2500 and the reading should be less than 3 PSI. A clogged catalytic converter can be a cause of an exhaust restriction. A catalytic converter can also become inefficient. One of my mentors used to say that catalytic converters don't just go bad, they are Most likely by continually driving with a misfire that is caused by a faulty secondary circuit of the ignition system. The catalytic converter does not like large amounts of fuel. Basically it overheats it and melts the substrate, AKA the honeycomb. This will lead to the dreaded P0420 code, catalytic converter inefficiency. To test the catalytic converter, you can take a rubber mallet and tap it. If it rattles, the converter has lost its substrate and must be replaced. You can also use an infrared pyrometer and take temperature readings at the inlet and outlet of the converter. With the engine at operating temperature, the outlet of the converter should be hotter than the inlet. The outlet of the converter should be hotter than the inlet. In some vehicles, the outlet can get up to 100 degrees hotter than the inlet, possibly more. If the temperatures read about the same, the converter is not oxidizing, it's not doing anything, and should be replaced. There is another test that involves the five gas analyzer but I doubt that will be on the test. I'll end the video with three questions. A three-way catalyst reduces which three exhaust gases? Number two, the malfunction indicator lamp is flashing while driving. What is the most likely cause of this? And number three, a vehicle is emitting blue smoke from the tailpipe. What is the most likely cause? Is it A, a blown head gasket? B, inefficient catalytic converter, C, worn valve guides, or D, 
a stuck open fuel injector. Have these videos helped you out? If they have, subscribe to show your support. Have a good day.